They're the country's most remote police force. You can be 250 kilometers from the nearest uh, anything. Let's rock and roll. Patrolling over a million square kilometers of the world's most unforgiving landscape. They keep the peace. It looks like it's starting to get out of control. Without losing their cool. <laughs> Just doing our job. Territory cops. Tonight. He had plans to take you here for the next couple of nights, what it sounds like. This couple's romantic night. Obviously, he was hoping for a bit of action. Gets gate crashed by the cops. Are you serious? Deadly serious. Opal the drug dog sniffs out a giant stash. Piss up, piss up. And a wee problem on Mitchell Street. It really does smell like piss everywhere. Senior Constable Jen Pocock is living her childhood dream. I've always wanted to be a police officer. And she's taken some inspiration from the small screen. This one! I love cop shows, you know, all the sexy drama that comes with that, and I thought I could do that. That looks pretty cool. One, two, three. And now she's part of Strike Force Trident, bringing her own style of policing. I don't always try and be everyone's friends, but I try and say it like it is. Most crooks will know that it is what it is with me. I'm not going to try and bullshit them. And like any good cop drama, a lot of Jen's work is undercover. We tend to operate in probably a more stealth mode, given the unmarked vehicles that we operate in and the clothing that we wear. We usually try and wear darker clothing at night time, which makes us fit in. So I think it definitely gives us an advantage at night time. It's nearly 4 a.m. and after a long shift, the tired Trident team are heading back to call it a night. But a car gunning it down the highway out near the airport catches their eye. Are you catching up to this car in front of us? Yeah, he's slowing down for the speed, speed camera, so he's definitely speeding. Radio. Seamus is straight onto the Rego number to find out who owns the vehicle. Late turn. Got anything? Hang on. Possess methamphetamine. Let's see him. Let's go. We want Still, oh, he's just gone in there. And just like that, a speeding car becomes a car full of suspects. Meth, 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 meth. BKM 107. We've got a trap at the airport gateway motel just in the car park. Looks like no one's clocking off this shift anytime soon. Here you go, mate. Just police. Notice you're travelling pretty quick along that road there. Get a driver's licence on you. Yeah. Thank you. Been in trouble with police before? Oh, yeah. He's staying here, are you? Yeah. Yep. While Jen deals with the driver, Seamus pays a visit to his companion. Hey, how you going? Police. Yep. Do you have any idea on you? No, I don't. What's your name, sorry? Jasmine. Jasmine. I know you. Yeah. Bingo. What are you up to? The reason these two are together is a little sketchy. How do you know Jasmine? Yeah. Are your mates or boyfriend, girlfriend? Bit of this, bit of that. Not really. We sort of just met each other tonight. Yeah. But his plans of romance is news to Jasmine. Well, he had plans to take you here for the next couple of nights, what it sounds like. Like that. That's what he said. <laughs> what were you doing tonight? I was just getting the train. OK. That's not what he's saying. Have you got accommodation here? I have no idea. I'm just in the car getting a lift. And if this hookup isn't looking sus enough, a bag search is about to make things even worse. Is there anything in here that I need to know about? Isn't this going to hurt me? That's not much stuff in that bag, then. Unfortunately, though, you were pretty able to identify that pretty early on. What else is in here? Hey, some toys, buddy. Originally a country boy from Victoria, Constable Brad Leggett has now well and truly set his roots in the Territory. I've wanted to be a copper probably since about 12. I've always been interested in it. Good boy. During the days off, I love spending time at home with my wife and my little boy, doing all the family stuff. As a new dad, Brad sees firsthand the magic of life. But as a member of the police negotiator unit, he's all too often confronted with death. Recently, there was a job where we did go to suicide intervention. A guy was in the city and hanging from a scaffolding. It was only after 25 minutes. He looked around at us, he smiled, and then he let go. He fell onto the road and died a short time later. It's late at night. And Brad and his partner, Mitch Bell, are on patrol. When the last call either of them want to hear comes in. 
Oh, Nagashi Adder. Yeah, that's me. I-74, uh, Roger. Attending. Any further details? Uh, I believe we've been involved in an incident with an ex-partner. Um, whereas we've been told, she's in tox and um, she's threatening to jump off the bridge, so we'll pull up and um, hopefully we can talk her down, of course, yeah, and zero, calm her uh, down, uh, get her to rethink what she's doing. With the memories of the last job still raw, it's a tough situation to face. They're off the elevator near Waterfront Bridge. Ahead of them, a distressed woman is being held against the bridge railing with a 25-metre drop onto the street below. Hello. Guys. Well, it's not what we've been Please. told, mate. What's going on, guys? Mate, do you feel like you want to jump off this bridge at the moment? Sorry. Be honest with me. Yeah, I do. A passerby managed to pull the woman from off the top of the railing a few minutes ago, and her husband has been trying to stop her from climbing up again ever since. What we are going to do is going to get well, out and we're going to grab a sitting down here. Uh, I'm here to make sure that you do not hurt yourself. Can you let go for us and walk back up this end with us where we're not near a great height? We're not going to hurt you. Some of the challenges of dealing with people having a mental breakdown or having suicidal thoughts, it's one of those things where you've really got to get on par with them and find out what's going on. Just relax. You're not, we're not going to hurt you. Just leave me. I'm done. Just, just leave me. me. Rally up in the car park in 10 minutes and we'll go from there. We'll... 15 years ago, Detective Kenny Bradshaw had an epiphany. I used to be a plumber before I was a police officer. Couldn't really see the long term future in it. So I joined the police for its variety and diversity, and there's nothing I would change about my job. I enjoy everything I do, the travel, even the paperwork. Now a permanent fixture in the drug squad, he reckons keeping it real Roger. is the best approach. Your family could be in the situation these people are in and, and try to have some compassion and, and sympathy and empathy, all those things that keep you feet on the ground and motivated as well to help them as much as you can. I personally regularly talk to the people that I deal with about their options of getting off drugs. Some take it well, some probably just throw it out the window. And uh, they're the people we see on and on, you know, over and over again. And today, Kenny's on the hunt for drugs and grog that could make its way to the remote community on Tiwi Island. Just heading down to the Tiwi Ferry Service to uh, screen passengers for drugs and alcohol. It's something we do on a regular basis to uh, create a deterrent. The alcohol and uh, drugs create all sorts of problems for the community and the police that are over there. Alcohol's banned and drugs are illegal, so uh, we try to deal with it as much as we can from this end. The cops have brought along a secret weapon, Opal the sniffer dog, who's trained to sit if he gets a whiff of drugs. Detective Senior Constable Alicia Harvey is part of the drug squad and can spot a stash a mile off. Well, you can't take that over with you, you know that. Biggest haul in the world. Yeah. The impacts are huge for uh, drugs and alcohol. There's an increase in domestic violence, suicides, unlawful entries. Everything that revolves around substance abuse is, is what we're trying to prevent. And it doesn't take long for Opal to discover one of the passengers is less than happy to see him. When we come down here with the drug detection dogs, you definitely see a change in behaviour and people that are worried about what they've got. Not very often that people can keep a poker face, especially when you bring a dog past them. She keeps trying to walk away, that's why I've been watching her. That's all right, it's all right, hey, 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 it's all right. I'll just stop, just stop moving. But it's not what's in her skirt that's got Opal worked up. He's copped a whiff of something else and gives the signal. Whose umbrella is this one? What's inside that umbrella? Let's go. We want him. Oh, he's just gone in there. BKM 107. We've got a trap at the airport gateway motel just in the car park. It's the end of the late night shift and lovebirds Brendan and Jasmine have been pulled over for a routine search. You know, the problem we have here, Jasmine, mm -hmm. is that if we find some stuff in here, look, it looks like I'm going to. So what I will do is, while I'm doing this, I'll tell you that you don't have to say or do anything unless you want to. Yeah, you're right. But anything that you say or do may be recorded and given in evidence, OK? Do you understand that? Yeah, no worries. Brendan has been busted before for having meth, 
and the cops think the pair could be up to a little more than midnight romance. I'm just going to do a quick search. I'll get you to take your tour. Jen suspects that Jasmine is hiding drugs. If you just want to come over to the front here, because I've searched you before and you've had stuff somewhere. Yeah, you're right. I don't have nothing. These yeah, are both pretty confident about that, so... Yeah, I don't have nothing. No worries. But before Jen even gets started on the body search, Jasmine's history catches up with her. You got a warrant. Who do? You do. You got a warrant of apprehension, so you didn't go to court. So you've been summoned. You would have it been summoned is. for Possessed something. Possessed methamphetamine. Oh, there you go. Are you serious? Yep, deadly serious. So you're under arrest at the moment. Oh, just chuck yeah. your hands together. Yeah, you're right. And that's your bag there? Yep. All right, just hang out with this officer. A warrant in court for drugs charges, and now Jasmine's staring down the barrel of even more strife. What's in these bags? These have got gear in them, Jasmine. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Oh, was that in the sharps container? Yeah. Mm, interesting. That's pretty smart. Most cops don't like looking in sharps containers. I don't know. But Jasmine's not the only one that's been holding out from the cops. So just a bit of cannabis just located in the door here. Smoking that weed tonight? If I do a lick test, are you going to show up as positive for cannabis? Yeah. Paul Blake thought he was going to come here and have a good time. Now he's getting arrested. Yeah, look, they said that uh, they had a bit of a fling together four years ago and they've just met up tonight. Obviously, he was hoping for a bit of action, but the only action he's going to get is our handcuffs. Jasmine, this is your ride. Both of these people have got extensive history for this behaviour and, um, and I think they're probably planning bigger and better things, so it's probably good to detect it now. Kenny and the drug squad are at the ferry terminal intercepting any illegal drugs and alcohol trying to make its way to the remote community on Tiwi Island. Sniffer dog Opal has positively ID'd something suspicious inside an umbrella. Whose umbrella is this one? Not my wearing of a boat deck. What's your name? Betty. Betty? What's inside that umbrella? Paper. Just paper? What's in it? I don't know. Two dill bags, hey? Yeah. Is this yours, Betty? No. Who They're put it mine. who put it there? I just left you, it out and smoked that thing anyway. You just put it there. Yeah. It's just two dill bags of cannabis and they were just wrapped in a bit of tissue inside this umbrella. She also had a six pack yeah. of beer that she was trying to take over to the Tiwis. Yeah, so before. I just had my beer. I'm gonna take that beer because you can't have uh, that one either, okay? You know that. Yeah. We didn't notice them. We were coming. You didn't know we were coming. <laughs> oh well. They're pretty good, those dogs, aren't they? So good. Alicia's hardly had time to write Betty's infringement when Opal sniffed out another problem. In here, in here, how much do you have on you? You don't know. Is it in your shirt? It's on you. And her deep pockets are getting more interesting by the minute. Is that it there? No. What's that? Grog. Well, we'll take that. Yeah. You don't need it then. And if two bottles of Bundy wasn't enough, even Alicia's surprised at what comes next. Is that strapped to you? Are you serious? Coming up, the big find that rocks the wee folk on Mitchell Street. That's an expensive piss then, isn't it? Kidding me. Senior constables Brad Leggett and Mitchell Bell are in the middle of a delicate negotiation. Just let go, mate. I'm going to have to make you let go. Come on. Just relax. On to the boys. What? Relax. Relax. And someone wanting to take their life, or at least considering it, you've really got to take a step back and apply a fair bit of empathy and try and find out where they're at so you can really make a bit of rapport connection with them. There's a little seat just here. I'm just going to get you to sit on that for me. Turn around, get the seat, mate. Don't try and run, don't do anything don't silly, right, mate? We're here to look after you. Although the immediate danger has passed, the woman's too fragile to be left on her own. So what's happened tonight? I, uh, I'm just... I'm just seeing the bigger picture. Yep. I'm just done. I don't want to... I don't know. I'm just done. Okay. You're done with what? Everything. Um, some people are quite suicidal and um, sometimes they really want to tell someone about it, get it sorted. In this case, um, 
it appeared to be quite a bad day. And um, I think it was just a cluster of things that rolled into one and uh, got a bit too much. Can you tell me about anything else? What happened tonight? What time? We finished. Listen, what we're going to have to do, as police, we have responsibilities here to make sure that your mental health is in check. I know you've had a few drinks tonight, and I know you don't seem like a bad person, and people have tough times in their life, but you do need to speak to someone at the hospital, OK? Do I have to go? Yeah, mate. What I would want to get across to anyone in that position who would be thinking of taking their life, it's not over. There's so many agencies, whether it be a support for cancelling, whether it be... ..at the hospital, OK? Do I have to go? Yeah, mate. What I would want to get across to anyone in that position who would be thinking of taking their life, it's not over. There's so many agencies, whether it be a support for cancelling, whether it be a youth organisation or marriage cancelling or someone who's got troubles with their kids. There's so much help out there to get you through. If I get you to stand up for me, I'll open up this door. Brad and Mitch will take the lady to hospital where she can get the help and support she needs. There's a step here to help you up. I can help you up there. Thank you. We're there to help you, and there's no other reason we're there. Drug dog Opal has sniffed out a suspicious passenger waiting to get on board the ferry to the remote community on Tiwi Island. In here, in here, this one. Is that strapped to you? Oh, no. It's a vacuum pack full of pot. How much is in this one? And it just keeps on coming. What's it in it? Coffee? I don't know. She tried to conceal them by using coffee to try and mask the smell. But the dog's trained only uh, to respond to one thing and it detected the cannabis. Who gave it to you? Some guy. Where? Some guy came to the house. Where? What house? Um, I was staying with my nephew in Vegas. Yeah. I don't know this guy, he just walked up. But the guy picked the wrong day to get his drugs smuggled onto Tiwi and into the community. All right, Murray, come out with me. There was definitely someone over the island waiting for those drugs and the alcohol to uh, have a good time. We fooled that. There's no doubt about it. It's a substantial bust as 200 grams of cannabis on Tiwi is worth more than 10 times the going rate in Darwin. It's in clips and bags. Yeah, it is quite a lot. It would be probably commercial quantity. Out in the communities, one gram will sell for about $100, and one gram's only the tiny little bag. And these are all packaged into actual individual bags inside the cry backing. The grip that the drugs that's got on people is never surprising to me. All right, Mari, you're under arrest. Do you understand that? For possessing cannabis and supplying cannabis. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Trying to break that grip on people is pretty hard, and we do that by trying to reduce supply and access to drugs. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Coming up... Oh, Mitchell Street. How I love by Mitchell Street. An unwelcome surprise for Kyle and Paulo. Oh, can you see penis there? I can see penis. It's a little-known fact, but Darwin actually has one of the highest rates of alcohol consumption in the world. Oh, Mitchell Street. How I love by Mitchell Street. And as the pubs and clubs close their doors and send the punters into the night... I don't understand why they do it. I still haven't worked that out. There's a wee problem that takes over the streets. It really does smell like piss everywhere. Uh, some people just, they drink and then... Piss up, piss up. Just a male urinating up against the wall. People get very embarrassed about getting caught out. Do you want to finish up, man? It always astounds me with public urinators. They think that they're doing nothing wrong. Oh, I just had to go to the bathroom. But using the outside toilet? Bad idea. Do you want to... No, you're not all good. Just stop where you are. It's usually the same excuse. There's not a toilet around or I couldn't make it or I couldn't hold it. That's an excuse? How you are, buddy? I think it's uh, generally poor planning on behalf of the individual themselves. Planning? We're not building a house. Why are you urinating in a public place, mate? There's far more that do it, that get away with it, than get caught. And you couldn't wait till you got home? No. 
if you know you're going to leave a licensed premises, the onus is on you just to maybe take care of business before you go. Yeah, I've just come from a club. Was there a toilet in there? Every pub's got a toilet in it here in Darwin. What club did you come out of? Discovery. Discovery. Do you have toilets in there? Personally, I do feel sorry for him. I mean, when you've got to go, you've got to go. Mate, you're paying in someone's container there. This is a business centre. People are walking through and people do complain that they can smell urine all the time. There we go. There are a few sure things in life. For Paulo and Kyle, Saturday night public urinators are definitely one of them. Oh, can you see penis there? I can see penis. Fellas, we get the picture. I haven't worked it out, man. I've been doing it for a long time, eh? Like... Came back to jail and then went out and then got done for peeing in public. It's the first time I did that. What, uh, what's your reason, mate? What do you want your reason listed as um, urinating? The clubs are lockout. Yep. There's no public toilets open. Is that your reason? I'm going to give you a ticket tonight for you urinating okay? in the public place. Please don't find me, man. I really can't afford it right now. It's a $472 fine. What? you got 28 days to pay it. 472. Are you serious? 472 dollars it is, mate. 472. Just because of pissing. Yeah, man. You're a big boy, man. You made the decision to urinate there. Along with the big fine comes some big regrets. I would not do it ever again. Bit of an expensive wee. It's like almost 300 euro. That's an expensive piss, then, isn't it? In any currency. If everybody did that, Darwin would not be a nice place to walk around, especially in the heat. That's terrible, eh? Yeah, I'm so Still leaking all over the ground, yeah. eh? It's not, something I'm, it's not something I'm proud of. You know the old saying, once you break the seal, that's it, man, it's all downhill. <laughs>